proportion and pattern. So the whole point of this one is we look at lots of layouts or we make our own layouts and we talk about making them more pleasing. And so these are some of the ways that we can make our layouts more pleasing. I've done this before. Okay, so movement. What was that? Is that an easier to do? It's not, but we can email it to you if you need it, okay? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so movement. Movement in the layout helps the viewer's eye take a path around your layout. It gives the feeling of motion and flow. When you're creating your layout, you can control what the viewer sees and how they see it and what we want the viewer to see as the main focus on your layout. So, here is the layout example with movement. What is the first thing you saw when you looked at it? Numbers. What else? Uh, what was the first picture? The picture. Which first? What was the first picture you saw? The top one. Uh, no, I saw the two of you together. I, I saw, saw the two of you together. together. I, saw yeah. I saw the bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, though, your eyes naturally start at the top, just like when we're reading a book. So your eyes naturally should go to the top left photo. Even though we didn't all see that, that's generally where your eyes go. Okay. So usually you start at the top and you work your way down. So that's what it's talking about in the photo strip when we're talking about movement. Usually you start at the top and you work your way down, and the photo strip helps bring your eyes to those photos to the bottom of the photo. Then your eyes usually end up going to either the title and then the journaling. And so doing a layout with movement like this, you're telling the viewer what you want them to see and where you want them to go. Emphasis. Emphasis is the main point of attraction in your layout that draws the viewer's eye. It's also known as a focal point. To make your layout more visually appealing, you generally don't want the emphasis of your layout to be in the center. This is where the rule of thirds mm -hmm. come into play, and we'll talk about that later. So in this layout, what's the first thing you saw? The big photo. Big photo. Big picture, right? So because the simplicity of the layout, there's nothing really there. Most of it's down at the bottom. But we have this one big picture. Most, most of you said you went to that big picture as your first, as the main focus. After looking at the largest picture, you probably then looked at the second picture in the layout. And the title is simple. It's just on a strip of paper. It's away from what we wanted our main emphasis on this layout to be, which of course was the big picture. Unity in the layout. Unity is the wholeness that is achieved through the use of elements to create a feeling of completeness. Too much unity can be boring. Too much can give the viewer a headache when they look at your layout. Repetition, continuation, and closure belong to unity. If an element on a page looks like it belongs together, opposed to having been collected and placed randomly, you usually have unity in your layout. Unity is looking at your layout all together, complete, finished. We have this cute layout right here. Okay? So we just talked about unity, though. So go ahead and say what the first thing is that you saw. Pictures again, right? Probably her biggest picture first. So she has our main focus in her layout. But for unity, because we're talking about things belonging together, the circular elements used throughout this layout, such as the flowers, the paper circles, they make unity. So she's bringing elements and paper pieces together that can belong together and make the unity. Those are the circular looking elements. The pictures all being in black and white also make unity. And even this picture shape, because they're all the same shape, is also unity in the layout. So harmony. Harmony is achieved by using similar elements in your layout. It gives an uncomplicated look to your layout. This is where color theory comes in, also known as color harmony, and we'll talk about that next. And here is the layout. So we just talked about a couple things. What do you see first in the picture? The picture. The picture in the layout, sorry, the picture. Okay, so we were talking about color harmony. What we'll, we'll talk about more, but um, the yellow and blue are complementary colors on the color wheel. All elements of the same colors that are used on the main paper 
So they're all blue, yellow, and brown. They all relate. The flowers that are used on the layout, there's also flowers in the paper. Variety. Variety is the quality or state of having different elements in your layout. This should be used through the use of contrast, the variety through emphasis, or difference in size and colors. And we have this cute layout. What's the first thing you saw? Brown photo. The tree. The what? The three D ness. The three D like It just stands out at you. Looks real, right? So the different shapes, different elements, provide a lot of variety. Because now we're talking about variety in the layout. So there's a lot of variety in this layout. Each cluster by the photos are different than the other cluster, so not only some of the elements are used in one, but they're different throughout both of them. So even though there's flowers, they're not the exact same flower. Contrast. Contrast is created by using elements that conflict with one another. This could be through complementary colors, extreme light and dark elements. It creates an interest in a piece and often drives the eye to a certain area. It can help you make your layout look interesting. So we have two layouts here. Both of them are very good examples of contrast. In the first one, what do you think a good example of contrast is in it? <laughs> white circle against the red paper. The white circle and the red paper? I think the frame and the red. The frame with the red? What about the second layout? What's a good contrast example here? Oh, that red square house. The red square house, right? So the first layout has contrasting shapes, circles, rectangles, your map. Okay, so even though the colors are very contrasting, so are the elements and the paper pieces we use, or she used. Okay, there's very straight arrangement of photos, the papers in contrast, there's some curled string. There's a lot of different things that put a lot of contrast in. In the second layout, it's white paper and cream paper and elements. Everything's very, very neutral in colors. And then we have this photo, bright, really contrasting with the kit sheet. Balance. Balance is arranging the elements in your layout so that no one part overpowers or seems heavier than the other part. There are three different kinds of balance, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial. Symmetrical is when both sides of your layout are equal, so they have the same items on both sides. Asymmetrical is one when your layout has one side that is different with other items that are, are different on both sides of the layout. And then radial balance is equal from the middle. Radial balance is hard to create in the layout because it can create a look of having an untidy layout. And it says, of course, there is all over pattern with radial balance, and this usually applies when using papers with repetitive patterns. So we have two layouts here. One on the left, which, what kind of layout do you think that is? Asymmetrical, symmetrical? Why would it be asymmetrical? Did you put it at stuff? Right. It's not the same on both sides. And the one on the right? How do you get symmetrical out of this layout? <coughs> rectangles and squares. Right, the rectangles and squares. That picture that's large, it can be broken down into more squares, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first layout is asymmetrical with the photo and paper being arranged from the other elements that are in the other corner. And the second layout, just like you said, is symmetrical because both sides are equal. Even though the pictures are only on the left side, the right, the right side is equal with square paper pieces as well as the buttons on both sides of the layout gives it a very asymmetrical look. Proportion is the measurement of size and quality of elements in your layout. This is where making your button the right size on your layout will come into play. How many times have you seen someone's layout, even if you're a designer, and they come back to you and that button is huge? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ginormous. And you print it out on a 12 by 12, you know that button would be seriously three inches, <laughs> right? So we have two layouts here. The first layout, I'll just go ahead. The first layout, it's really not a horrible layout, but if she would have made, the she did this on purpose, by the way. She didn't like <laughs> make this layout. She's like, I'll make one that looks horrible, and she brought it back, and I'm like, that's really not horrible, but that works. So even
even though it's not horrible, if we could have made a little thing, things a little bit more smaller in size, maybe small to make the pictures a little bit smaller, it could have just made a more pleasing layout for us. The second layout, she made the smaller, the flowers smaller, the buttons smaller, and the pictures are more smaller. It just makes for a more pleasing layout. Pattern. Pattern and rhythm is also known as repetition. It's showing consistency with colors or elements. Putting a red button on the lower left and the right top will cause the eye to move from one button to the other and everything in between. It indicates movement by the repetition of elements, and it can help your, your layout stay active. So here's the layout with repetition. What are some of the things that you see repeated in this layout? The button. What else? The ribbon. Check. The frames on the two pictures. The frames on the two pictures. The shape. Right. Right. The triangles, the shapes of everything. So the ribbons repeating around the photo causes your eye to move along those lines, looking at everything as well as the photo. Kind of draws your attention to the photo. The consistency of the colors repeated throughout the layout would also be considered a pattern. So there's reds and blues and greens. So you threw out the entire thing and even brought into where the pictures are using on those on those frames. Um, elements from the buttons, the tape pieces, the clouds, and even the flourishes and flowers are repeated in the layout, and all those have patterns. So now elements of design. We're going to talk about the three F: form, follows function, lines, colors. Shape, texture, form, and value. The three S. Form follows function. Form refers to what something looks like, and function refers to how it works. In digital scrapbooking, this applies to what kit we use with the picture when we are scrapbooking. So what's she scrapbooking right now? What's that picture? Ferg. And what's her kit out? Ferg. You know, that would be the same thing as buying a kit to scrapbook your birthday pictures. That's what the three F's all, are, are all about. So the picture being scrapbooked is of a bird. The kit being used is a bird themed kit. And then it says, we know we can get away using other themed kits for pictures, but if you use a themed kit that matches the picture, you can end up with a fun themed layout, right? So if you use a birthday kit with birthday pictures, it, you know you're going to have elements that are birthday related for your layout. So a line. The line is the basic element that refers to the continuous movement along the surface. Lines in your layout are curved by using paper pieces or templates are basic building blocks and creating a plan for your layout. Think curved, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, zigzag, wavy, parallel, dash, dotted lines. These can be in rickrack string stitches to the way we lay our papers on our layout. So what about this layout? Where are the lines? The layered papers. The layered papers? The trim at the left. The trim at the left? The frame. The frame. So this layout, in this layout, the paper is arranged in this manner, form lines along the left side of the layout. Just like you said, the lines in the paper are stacked. There's some good solid lines there. The circular flowers also help draw your attention to the picture. The straight ribbons the ribbons, labels, the frame, as well as the thin frame have obvious lines. And all the lines in this layout uh, tie together nicely and that causes distraction from the picture. And now we have this one. Where's the lines in here? The curves. The circles. The green border. The green border. The purple curve. Yeah, there's purple curves. Mm -hmm. The frame. Yeah, definitely the frame. This one has a lot of curved, circular things. Even the flowers are considered circular, which fall in those lines. The curves in the paper help draw your attention up to the photo that has been tucked into it. The elements are arranged in a way that you were brought back to the photo. And nothing is distracting your attention away from the photo on the layout. Colors. Colors and contrasting colors can be used to draw attention to a particular part of your layout. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite on the color wheel and create contrast. The novelist colors are found side by side and they can be used to create harmony. 
Triadic colors are colors that are even spaced around the color wheel. They usually create vibrant layouts, even when you use, I think that's supposed to be pale, sorry, or unsaturated version. And monochromatic, monochromatic colors are tints and shades of one color. Warm colors are colors that consist of reds, yellows, and oranges, and cool colors are consisting of purples, greens, and blues. What's the first layout? Monochromatic. What are the colors? Orange and, and what else? Light orange. And what about the second layout? What would that be? Okay. So the first layout could be considered monochromatic because of the orange colors used in different tints. Do we know what the difference is between twin tints and shades? One that uses blacks and one uses white to create the different colors. It could also be considered uh, anomalous because of the colors could be considered yellow in there, even though it's a light orange. It's next to the orange on the color wheel, so the sun could have the yellow, and you could consider it that as well. The second layout is considered complementary because pink and green are opposite on the color wheel. And then we'll talk about more of that when we talk about scrapping the color. And this layout, what would this consider? What would this be considered? Why? Colors. This layout is considered triadic because the colors red, yellow, and blue are spaced evenly around the color wheel. Shape. Shape is defined as an area that stands out from the space next to it due to an implied boundary. It can be you. It can be because of differences of color or texture. <coughs> they can also show perspective by overlapping, being geometric or organic. They create an interest or certain style to your layout. This one, what shape? What's the main shape? What shapes are in the layout? Squares, rectangles, circles, hexagons. Hexagons. In scrapbooking, some shapes become standards, like rectangular pictures or paper pieces in squares, rectangles, or circle shapes. The shapes, can, um, the shapes you use can be one of the strongest design elements in a layout. By adding a mix of shapes in this layout, there's the circles, the stars, the squares, it makes it appealing. Shapes can hold an interest, like the rectangular shape title or the way you journal. Texture. In digital scrapbooking, you know you're getting a good kit when the texture looks tactile or real looking. Papers have texture and you want to use textures on your layout that to your brain says, this is realistic. Even though we can't use pop dots to raise elements on your layout, you can use the, through the use of shadows, you can give an impression of depth on your layout. When making a layout, if the texture is not implied and may not be visually appealing to look at, it also applies to the elements you use. Digital stamps like bubble wrap and bubble wrap stamps are great when wanting to add texture to a layout. Form can be measured from top to bottom and side to side and front to back. It can also be defined by light and dark. By creating form through layers, you are helping make your layouts look visually appealing. Value. Value is the element of layouts that refer to the relationship between light and dark on the surface. It helps give depth and perception. This is where your shadows come into play. A visually appealing layout isn't flat, but has shadows that create an enjoyable layout to look at. This is something that makes you wonder if you can touch it because it can look so real. So we're going to show you three different layouts. They're all the same layout, but each one's different. It's kind of hard to see on this board, so we're going to tell you the differences. Uh, the first layout is cute, says, of course it's cute. Mm -hmm. It could come across as being boring, and you can't see on the screen, but there is no textures on any of the papers or elements, and of course it's missing the drop shadow. Um, says, however, because the layers in the layout that creates the form, it does make it more appealing than if it was just a single piece of paper with several pictures stacked on top of it. The second layout, you can't tell, but it has texture on the paper and on the element. It is still very flat looking though because they don't have any drop shadows on it. <coughs> this one now has everything on it. It has the texture and the drop shadows. 
it just really pops out, looks more realistic, like it would be a paper scrapbook page that's been scanned, right? Has both texture on the elements and paper, it gives it more realistic fill. The use of drop shadows not only gives value, but it makes it more appealing to look at, look at and it makes it seem much more real life, like someone took the picture, took a picture of a paper layout. The golden ratio is where the rule of thirds come from. The golden ratio is also known as the golden mean. It's a mathematical number. There's a lot of details behind it, but without going into the details, those numbers go something like this. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. If you take the ratios created by those numbers, the higher numbers give you a ratio of 1.618. And this ratio and those numbers are found in many things in nature that our eyes tend to find beauty in. A seashell spiral uses these numbers. Many flowers have 3, 5, 13, 21, 34, 55, or even, even 89 petals. And I googled that. I made sure there was a flower out there with 89 petals, and there is. <laughs> <laughs> Some music can even be broken down into this ratio or use these numbers. So what this is telling us is if we use things with these numbers, our eyes naturally find beauty in it, okay? How do we get these numbers? So it's a mathematical, mathematical equation from Fibonacci. Who's heard of Fibonacci? <laughs> I love Fibonacci. I read a whole thing about him. I was just, wow. Like bees? Have you ever heard about bees and Fibonacci? Look it up. It's so cool. <laughs> I've been never impressed by Fibonacci and bees. And rabbit? Yeah, so it's me. Okay, so uh, basically it's a line or a place in a regular rectangle. So when the line is placed, a square is created within that rectangle along a second rectangle. I know it makes no sense, but we're going to look at it. <laughs> so here we have our rectangle. Now, here's the golden ratio or golden mean. It's the line. So now we have a square and a rectangle that's formed from that first rectangle. So a perfect rectangle is one where the rectangle, rectangle left over can be further broken down into two more rectangles. So now we took our, our rectangle, we have our golden ratio, before it was a, a square and a rectangle, now it's a square and two more squares. And we'll explain how this relates to scrapbooking in just a minute. I know. <laughs> what does this have to do, Nicole? Well, I don't know. Let me tell you. Hi. Oh, wait, here we go. <laughs> How does this apply to layout? Well, let me tell you. So, you could use the ratio, which is the place that your eye naturally falls to create dynamic relationships in your layout as long as there is balance. If you make a grid, divide it up in eight, and you draw your lines vertically and horizontally at three eighths from each side, whoa, oh, three eighths from each side, yeah, three eighths, you get the golden ratio. So, don't worry, it gets easier than that. It's not easy dividing your layout into eight, so now we divide it into thirds. By doing so, you get the rule of thirds, which helps your image get close to where that golden ratio would be. Here's a cute layout. Look at my kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looking at it, where are our squares and rectangles? What are we seeing in this 